Welcome to the channel everybody, my name is Mr. Hurricane and in today's video I wanted to dive into Madden 18 franchise mode and just give you a look at what a year in franchise mode looks like. Now every year I like to make a video showing what an off season looks like, but there isn't much new in franchise mode this year. So really you'll get more out of this video if you're a beginner to franchise mode or you don't know a lot about it in general. It's very, very familiar to last year. There are some improvements that I like, but there weren't a lot of improvements I was hoping for. So if you played last year's franchise mode, you're basically prepared for this year, but there are a couple improvements. I do think franchise is better this year, but I don't think it's a lot better. So what you're seeing right here is just the final preseason week. There's no longer an intermediate cut date, so you go from your 75-man roster in the game, or is it 70, I forget, all the way down to 53. You can add 10 players to your practice squad in preseason week 4. These menus are the same, you have your depth chart laid out right there, and you can also upgrade the players, their XP is listed on the top right hand corner. This all here is basically the same, there's a new background and there are some improvements kind of behind the scenes to some different systems that I'll talk about as we get there. You have the news stories every week, if you're in owner mode, which I enjoy playing, you get control over the finances of the team, and you can mess around with ticket prices and concessions, merchandise. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it does help you like add funds to your franchise so you have money for signing bonuses and giving out contracts to various players. So you can manage that the way you want. If you prefer to play as a coach, then you will not have the owner's box options. However, as a nice trade-off, you do get to use the entirety of your salary cap and don't have to worry about having the funds. You just have to remain under the cap. As an owner, you can still make these different changes for the coaching side of things and you can go into formation subs, which I would recommend doing. So in certain formations, you can have different players in various spots. Like in this situation, I put Jarek McKinnon as the Wildcat quarterback or you could go into certain nickel packages and make sure that you don't have your big nose tackle on the field anymore and you have another pass rusher. A lot of things you can do there in formation subs. Also in week one, you have your game planning every week. It appears to be the same as last week. And the important feature here is just to worry about your focus training because these are the players who are going to get extra XP every week. And as you do the training, you'll see how that goes. I sim them here as an example, so I get the bronze medals. But the three focus players I had all get a little extra experience on top. Those are the ones I want to develop in this little example. Like I said, a lot of this is the same as last year. But I know there are some that haven't played franchise mode before and I want to get more people into the mode so that it gets more attention of course when more versions of Madden come out and we get a great franchise mode. I don't have a ton of new things to talk about in this video, so I might have to make some videos talking about things I would like to see. As you advance throughout the season, various events will pop up, players will get injured, you'll have big decisions to make, and you'll have media questions. Your answers and how the team plays afterwards can affect things like ticket sales and team popularity. You can check the news stories throughout the season, get a little glimpse of what's going on around the league, and you can also learn about various draft picks are going to be in the upcoming draft. And you'll definitely want to pay attention to the players that are being talked about, whether it's for positive or negative reasons. Here is the stats page, and you can check on the league leaders, how your team is performing, and who the top players each week are. And once you sim to week three, this is when you can start negotiating for contracts, and scouting players for the upcoming draft. You'll also have more events popping up as you go on. I have regression here as Bucky Hodges had fumbled a couple times. Carrying goes down. So with the contract negotiations, you tend to have your starters negotiate with you earlier in the season. And you can see their requests for deals there. And you can start negotiating if you choose. Now what I like that has been changed I think starting last year is that you can negotiate with the player maybe he says no but you can continue the negotiations the following week you'll see me negotiate here with Joe Berger over a number of weeks but you can start scouting here which is one of the most fun parts of the game of course getting to scout young talent and then draft them and improve your roster and it's the same as last year you can scout their top three ratings the top rating is the most expensive 
and every team will have a scout and wherever that scouts focus is scouting those positions will be cheaper and in this case the Vikings had an offensive line scout which I do recommend getting because you start five offensive linemen every week whereas you'll start one quarterback don't get a scout that just focuses on one position but of course in examples here I will go and do some weird stuff so I fire the scout here and I actually didn't have a chance to hire a scout afterwards so I actually went on without a scout here I don't recommend doing that one improvement I like in Franchise this year is the ability to reorder your draft board and move players wherever you choose so that you actually know who your favorite prospects are. And once you start scouting, you know, 50, 60, 70 prospects, it'll be much cleaner to navigate. You can go into your positions and look at your favorite quarterbacks. And if you make changes in the quarterback menu, for instance, it'll be reflected then in your overall draft board. Not a major change, but it's a very convenient one that I'm glad is here. Now, make sure you scout every week because every week it's going to remove half your scouting points. So if you wait until the end, you are going to miss out on a lot of chances to find out where the talented players in the draft are. Now, looking at some classes so far on Madden 18, it does appear like cornerback is much stronger this year, and there is just in general a lot better talent, especially in the mid-rounds. Lots of low 70s, mid to high 70s throughout. Now, the contract negotiations continue here for Joe Berger. I wanted to see if he'd ever get sick of it and just say, I'm done, but I was actually able to go under his offer like three four times and he would not budge on the price point now I checked the injury report later during the season and a bunch of running backs were getting injured so I decided to make a move here and test out the trading I put Sam Bradford on the injured reserve we'll play Teddy Bridgewater we're okay there but I wanted to see if I could get Duke Johnson from the Browns and I got him for a third round pick they didn't think he fit their scheme I think it's pretty decent value for the Browns considering he wasn't their starting running back at the time and there has been some logic reworked for trading in the players that the CPU is going to value. They value rookies more, players in their first contract, and their backup quarterbacks and running backs according to the franchise blog from a few weeks ago. They are valued higher as well. You can go into full player editing here like I did with Teddy Bridgewater and you can make any changes that you want including two contracts which I like that was introduced last year and you can see all of uh, the players that have been edited in the transaction log. I also wanted to take a look at any trades the CPU was making and I still think the CPU is not valuing their draft picks enough. The Cardinals gave up a ton of their picks for just Brian Poole and Sammy Coates. I don't think it's wrong that they targeted those players, but they certainly gave up too much to actually acquire them. Going through some more negotiations here, Joe Berger still can't get him signed, but we'll look at Teddy Bridgewater now and offer him the $107 million deal, and Teddy accepts that. I also had a big decision here in Week 11. Do I start Latavius Murray or Dalvin Cook? If you start the injured player, ratings go down significantly, and it's rarely ever worth it to actually play them through the injury. After a while, I decided to take Sam Bradford off the injured reserve, which you can do to one player every year, but they have to be on the IR for, I believe, eight weeks. So I brought him back to the active roster, and then we sim to the postseason where the Vikings did not make it, and it automatically signs all your practice squad players to the roster, and you can now focus on your staff and if you want to keep your head coach, trainer, and your scout. With the season over, you can also upgrade your player ratings if you want to right now. I like to do it throughout the season and kind of as they get the points instead of just trying to make them better throughout the offseason. And I wanted to see just what injury reports will look like at the end of the year because injuries have been changed a bit this season. And I did not see as many injuries as I thought I would, and definitely a lot less season-ending injuries than I thought I would. Now keep in mind, I use pre-existing injuries on here, so there are a lot of players who are hurt in real life that were then injured in the game as a result. But the big issue here is that the CPU is not putting those players on injured reserve. So they're not playing, and they're taking up a roster spot. That needs to be fixed. The CPU should be IRing all of those players who are out for the season. 
Overall, I'm a fan of the step injuries took this year. There aren't as many major injuries, not as many quarterbacks getting hurt, yet you're still having to worry about your depth at various areas, and players are going to miss some games here and there. And that, I believe, is a step in the right direction, although it's not finished, in my opinion. You get to the playoffs, you can sim through the games, check out the news stories, see how different teams are doing, and you'll see that various teams are hiring head coaches. Pro Bowl week is the only time you can see the full Pro Bowl roster. You cannot play the Pro Bowl this year. You haven't been able to in quite some time. I'd like to be able to play the Pro Bowl and also spectate any game that I want. I remember spectating a Super Bowl back in my Madden 12 franchise. I love to spectate some key games if I'm not a part of the playoffs or something. Now, I want to look at season stats as well at the end of the year. And here are the leaders, Dak Prescott, 42 touchdowns and 20 interceptions. Blake Bortles, 28 interceptions. The main area of focus here for me was at running back. I know in the sim logic we saw so many backup running backs racking up touchdowns, and there are some instances of that this year. The bigger issue, I think, is that in the simming, these players are not getting many yards on their carries. So many of these running backs will have a long under 20 yards, which is ridiculously low. A lot of improvements have to be made to the sim logic because a lot of these yards per carry are very low, and many players aren't getting a run over 20 yards all season. You do get some instances like that with the Raiders where the backup running back had 16 rushing touchdowns, which is also unheard of. A lot of these players have stat lines very similar to what Todd Gurley did last year, which is extremely uncommon for a player who starts all year. Gurley played all 16 games, but only had 885 yards, 3.2 yards a carry, and a long of 24. Stat lines like this can happen, but they shouldn't at the rate they do in Madden. I looked at the extra points as well, because I know that in Super Sim, when you're in the game, kickers are terrible. But when you sim regularly, they're not missing the extra points, and you are near the frequency they do in Super Sim, that logic also has to get significantly better. When you get to the offseason, it's time to start negotiating with the players that have expiring contracts. And sometimes you'll offer a player what they want, but they still want to test out free agency. I like that dynamic that it's not super predictable, but usually you will get a player to accept the baseline fair offer that they initially ask for. I get that from Sharif Floyd, Kai Forbath. I think I was like three of four or four for five in that contract department. You can also go to the transaction log and check on retirements as soon as the offseason gets underway and it shows how many years those players had played. Eli Manning retires, but you won't see as many quarterbacks retire early. You still see uh, Tom Brady in the league, Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers, and their regression has been toned down. I show that more toward the end of the video. Regression is an area where Madden 18 franchise has improved. Now, to see a free agent class like this was pretty exciting because last year, free agency was pretty boring. Not many high-rated players hit the market. It was possible but mostly when a team just spent so much money on other players they couldn't afford a uh, star, like how I got Jalen Ramsey in my Chargers franchise. Now DeAndre Hopkins hits the market, and the point system looks to be the same as last year. Now, in the past, you could lowball players who weren't getting much interest. I tried to go a bit lower here for Chris Long, but still gave him a deal that would keep uh, the bar in the green. Then I experimented with Brooks Reed. I dropped his way below what he was asking. And the results were what I expected. Chris Long accepted his. Brooks Reed did not accept his low one-year offer. This was mentioned in the franchise blog again a few weeks ago. You sim past the first week, and most of the top-rated players will have accepted deals by now. They have the most interest and the highest contract offers. They accept usually after stage one. Once you get to stage two, you also now get to look at the combine scores for all the prospects, and this will tell you an idea of their physical ability, strength, speed, acceleration, agility, and jumping. It is the same as last year. You can go and see 434 speed. I know Bobby Lockett can run. B plus route running. That's a winner right there. Don't know what's catching, but I, I'm hoping it's not too bad. Then there's Rodriguez Ely. Look at the route running and the catching with 4-3-3 speed and the agility scores through the roof. 
There are a lot of intriguing prospects in the drafts this year. There are better players, and I think the top tier talent at each position might be a bit better than we've seen in the past. I saw some excellent quarterbacks last year and pass rushers, but I think like the best cornerbacks, they appear to be better, and I think you'll see better tight ends this year as well. And wait till you see the player I took in the first round in this draft. There are some results from the first round of free agency, and you can go to the transaction log and see numbers. Contracts are not changed this year. They are still backloaded, which I really want to see contracts be reworked so that we can have front-loaded deals, maybe some balanced as well. You can go along and then try to sign some lower-tier free agents, trying to get Will Ty here on the Vikings. And he ended up declining this offer because another team jumped out in front with their contract offer. I do wish that the CPU could like respond to what you do during this week. Like you see what the CPU has bid, you can just outbid them and they don't really have a chance to outbid you in the same time frame if that makes sense. So I like to see the CPU have a better chance of winning those free agent battles if they're willing to spend the money, but you just outbid them and it kind of ended there. You can check on the draft stories as well. I recommend doing that throughout the season. A lot of players with high development or just good players will be mentioned in those draft stories. Those are nice for some added context behind those players. Occasionally, we'll have a storyline there. Maybe a player's father was in the NFL or something of that nature. Then you get to the actual NFL draft after three rounds of free agency. You can check the recap if you choose, or just jump right into the draft. Draft logic has been improved this year, so teams won't be doubling up on the same positions. There is a cool down period that was mentioned in the blog, so they're not going to take like back-to-back -back quarterbacks. And I'll show you the draft results afterwards. There are a lot better players in these classes, and the CPU ends up with significantly better draft hauls. You can still edit your draft board at this point, and I did so here. If this were my actual franchise, I'd have significantly more players to re-rank, and it would be a little bit time-consuming, but certainly worth it. I went through here on my small draft board to find my favorite prospect, and I found a good one. Cornerback Kendrick Skinner went to number one, and I took him, and for the first time, I found a corner who was number one in true talent. 93 speed, 88 man, 85 zone, 86 press. I can't think of a better player to pair up with Xavier Rhodes. Kendrick Skinner is a player that I would love to have in a series, especially being a defensive back guy. And there were a lot of good early round cornerbacks in this class, which helps balance out how many good early wide receivers there are. Now, Taylor Yoder was a player who was actually losing stock because I think he was wanting to play baseball or something, I ended up getting him later. I believe he was initially a first round prospect. I get him later, 78 overall, slow development, but a pretty good prospect overall. Then I took a low ranked running back, took a good combine score at left end later in the draft, turned out to be a very good defensive tackle prospect. And then you can go to the draft recap, and it was interesting seeing the CPU teams get so many better players than they did in Madden 17. Here was my team, but the CPU teams were far more impressive to me. Now, I do wonder if there's too much top-tier talent in these classes. Last year, I thought there was too little, and maybe this year is an overcorrection. I'll have to do some more draft sims to see for sure, but there seems to be a lot better talent, and there were very few teams that didn't have impressive draft classes. There were some really good players here, like Thomas Jordan, the pass rusher with high block shed, rushes with power, finesse, has the speed and acceleration high. There were some very good defensive backs, I like seeing that. There were a lot of good quarterbacks in this class. Didn't see as many busts early on. Like, oftentimes in Madden 17, I'd see a player with like 68 overall go in the first round. Didn't really see that here. I saw some really good offensive linemen with actually decent pass blocking and strength. And wait until you see the 49ers draft class here. They fix so many needs in just one draft. They go and get a franchise tackle, a quarterback, give them a tight end to throw the football to. Look at this, a receiving tight end. I could not find a player like Justice Gray in Madden 17. They were all bad combo tight ends in Madden 17. 
Then they also got a really good offensive lineman later, 77 overall in the sixth round. That is how you turn around a franchise right there. That's, that's an impressive draft class. At free safety, how about Delton Hope, 94 speed, 83 zone coverage, 88 hit power. That is, that's a top tier safety. I haven't seen too many blue chip safeties go through these draft classes. Now the Titans did not have a good class. They had the worst. Nobody in the 70s for overall. And after that, you can go right on to preseason and do it all over again. I just want to show you what regression looks like. And keep in mind, I'm in Cloud Franchise for this example. Uh, there are some things that are in Cloud Franchise right now that aren't in offline until they get patched in. So you'll have to keep an eye on that and when the patches are coming out. But players who are older, which is 29 and above, they're still going to be useful players, although they will be regressing. They're just not going to regress as sharply as they did in Madden 17 and years prior, where once they're 29, it's time to start thinking about replacements. So you'll have players like Larry Fitzgerald, who are still going to be very good, even if their speed has gone down. Look at those skills. 84 speed. Larry's still going to get the job done for the New York Jets if they have a decent quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, his ratings are just fine. Jordy Nelson, same deal. Speed down a bit, but those receiver skills are all great. Thomas Davis can still play. That takes us to the end. You can go into preseason and do it all over again. But like I said, not a lot new this year in Madden 18 franchise, which is definitely disappointing. The points of emphasis this year... In franchise were the customizable draft board, the draft logic, which does seem to be better, franchise commentary, trade tuning, free agent tuning, progression tuning, injury tuning, retirements, progression, and the XP that comes with certain awards and whatnot, then regression and a few new relocation cities. While Franchise does have some improvements this year, a lot of issues need to be ironed out, and I'd like to see a lot of systems be improved in the future. Things like injuries can still go a step further. I still think that we need to get better contracts in the game. i like to see coordinators come into play and have the coaching staff really matter. And CPU logic for pretty much everything, I think, can be improved. So I'll have to make some Madden 18 or Madden 19 wish list videos here. This is kind of the best time to do it once we get uh, to look at this game and see what we want to see moving forward. So I will be doing some of those and I will be making a video I'm excited to post soon talking about top five franchise teams because so many ask me who should I use for franchise. I'm going to make a video that answers that question for you. Be on the lookout for that. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your feedback down below in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed the video despite not a whole lot of new things to talk about. And subscribe to the channel for my upcoming Chicago Bears franchise on Madden 18. Have a great day, everybody.